responsibility he has bestowed upon me, I sincerely thank his, his Grace the Archbishop and his Commissary Venerable Samuel Ramai for your dedication, commitment, and integrity in ensuring a fair and transparent electoral process. Thank you, Grace, for your guidance, direction, and advice during the transition period and for presiding over my consecration and enthronement service. It is indeed a great, great honor. To my retreat master, Right Reverend Dr. Moses Masaba, the Bishop of ACK Dallas Mbere, and Mama Canon Lucy Masamba for your mentorship, training, guidance, and the words of wisdom shared during the retreat. It has been an instrumental and insightful moment of reflection and personal evaluation on myself and my wife Dorcas Njeri Yashavi on the task ahead of us. We know we still have a lot to learn from you and we expect to continue getting your support and wise counsel in future. Thank you for your presence here today. I express my appreciation to each member of the Synod and the Electoral College for your trust and confidence by electing, electing me as the third bishop of this diocese. To my predecessors, Bishop Emeritus Stephen Kabora and Bishop Emeritus Charles Gaikia, who are here today, receive my warm appreciation for your leadership, stewardship, and unwavering commitment that has significantly shaped and strengthened the SAK Diocese of Nehururu for the past 26 years. We will not be here today if it wasn't for the great leadership that you have shown. We pray for your good health and long life, and I wish you well in your future endeavors. These bestowment members and brothers and sisters ushers in a new dawn, a new beginning and a new chapter for our diocese to soar to greater heights, just as, it, uh, just as the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up like eagles, uh, their wings as eagles, they shall run and not get weary, and they shall walk and not faint. My mantra is soaring to greater heights, and just like an ego, the ego overcomes all adversities and has a fearless spirit of a conqueror. With this spirit, I purpose to achieve and conquer the unachievable, and it is, this, it is the same spirit that I wish to dispense to my clergy and staff as we work together in achieving my ministry objectives and the strategic plan of this diocese. My vision, I'm glad to share with you my vision, which I am passionate about, it is progress that progress and transform the body of Christ. My vision to see this diocese grow in a holistically evolving diocese that boldly proclaims Christ and equips saints for the Great Commission. In the words of Lee Bowman, I quote, A vision without strategy remains an illusion. And to realize this vision for myself, we have set out six strategic pillars to guide our endeavor. The first one is spiritual empowerment. The second one is social economic empowerment. The third one is human resource development. The fourth one is stewardship of the diocese and assets. The fifth one is leveraging on technology. And the last one, which is emotive, the prophetic voice of the church. Allow me to expound on the foundation of pillars for guiding our strategy. Pillar one is the spiritual empowerment. Your, uh, your grace, this will focus on nurturing the spiritual growth and well-being of individuals within the community. It entails such initi initi initiatives like, uh, such as one, home church fellowships. Your grace, the 40 of any church community is anchored on the strength of home uh, church fellowships. These fellowships nurture deeper connections, mutual support, and spiritual growth from the grassroots level upwards. Our diocese will continue to strengthen these fellowships. Second, uh, second, the second one is strengthening sectoral ministry. Our focus on sector ministry will ensure holistic grown growth and effective outreach. And this will be achieved through resourcing and appointing effective leaders who enhance the capacity of the ministries to fulfill the Great Commission. Three, promoting mission work. Mission work is essential to spreading the gospel of Christ and establishing new churches. Towards this effort, we will roll out intensive evangelism and outreach programs, partner with other mission initiatives, and employ able evangelists for this endeavor. The ministry, the fourth one is the ministry to the enriched. This is an introduction of a unique ministry dedicated to reach out to persons facing social challenges such as alcoholism in pursuit of inclusivity, compassion, and transformation. The fifth one is school ministry outreach. Your grace through chaplaincy program, 
we intend to support holistic development of students through mentorship, uh, mentorship guidance, and spiritual growth. Further, offer Episcopal duties such as Holy Communion and Confirmation services in Anglican-sponsored schools. The sixth one, the Biblical Education and Discipleship, is to promote spiritual, vibrant, healthy, growing church. Biblical education and discipleship is fundamental. Therefore, as a diocese, we will continue to facilitate the logical training such as TE, discipleship classes, and Bible study programs. Your Grace, we also want to venture into prayer and worship, being part of our pillar, that we cultivate a, a culture of prayer and worship through prayer gatherings, worship services, and spiritual retreats. In addition, we will allocate resources for the upgrade of Karima Prayer Center and deploy a full-time clergy. The last one under that pillar is the ministry to the diaspora. Your grace, we acknowledge the extension of our church to the diaspora. With modern technology, we will bridge the geographical barriers, and the diaspora community will remain connected to their heritage and faith through this diocese. The second pillar is socioeconomic empowerment. Brethren, this pillar aims at implementing strategies to empower individuals and uplift communities towards prosperity and self-sufficiency. This includes the following. One, the microfinance programs. Through the empowerment of our circle individuals, families, and the society around us, we have an opportunity to improve their finances and build assets through access to financial services and trainings. This initiative will significantly contribute to economic stability and growth of the grassroots level in line with the government's economic model. Two, the agri-business programs. In consideration to a significant contribution to food production in the country, empowering individuals and communities to enhance productiv productivity and profitability of the agricultural endeavors will spur growth. As a diocese, we will organize forums, mobilize partners, and engage experts in farming. The third one is on humanitarian community development program and projects. For Christians, the church is integral to the society. Through collaboration with local stakeholders, government, NGOs, and our own Anglican Development Services, ADS, we will support in areas of need and undertake projects that will enhance mission. And the fourth one on that is risk management. This will ensure the long-term sustainability, integrity, and effectiveness of its operations and ministry, enabling it to fulfill its mission and serve with excellence and accountability. The fourth pillar, Your Grace, is human resource development. It is imperative for our diocese to ensure that our staff and clergy obtain requisite support to excel in their duties, and this will be achieved by the following. One, capacity building. We are committed to ensure that our staff are equipped with the necessary skills and knowledge to enhance performance, productivity, and motivation to full potential. The second one is talent identification and deployment. Your Grace, through appraisal of our human capital, we will assign our staff to suitable positions of responsibility and consequently recognize achievements To full potential. The second one is talent identification and deployment. Your grace, through appraisal of our human capital, we will assign our staff to suitable positions of responsibility and consequently recognize clergy, family, lay readers, and staff. 
The fifth one, your grace, the fifth pillar is leveraging on technology. Technology has transformed operations in many sectors globally. Our diocese recognizes the need to adopt, to, to adopt the emerging technologies and innovations in communication, outreach, administration, and its operations, among others. We enable to have the following. One is virtual worship and outreach uh, services by live stream, streaming or recording church services and events to reach to a wider audience. Online giving uh, platforms. This is by deploying sec secure online systems such as mobile apps to facilitate convenient and secure financial transactions. Church, the third one is church management applications uh, to streamline administrative tasks such as member management, event scheduling, and financial reporting. The fourth one under technology is virtual meeting tools, which with the, with the affordability of smart devices, these tools have become convenient and cost effective. With the spread of the internet across our dioceses, we will engage leaders in meetings and worship. And finally on that is education resources repo repository. This will strengthen the church by equipping its leaders and workers with knowledge, skills, and spiritual materials they need to effectively serve and lead God's people. Your grace, the last one on this one is the prophetic role of the church. The Anglican Church of Kenya acknowledges its vital role in offering spiritual guidance and moral insights to the society and government leaders. The diocese will speak out on moral, social, and ethical issues based on religious teachings and principles, of, uh, and principles through. We look, we, we, we look at these things through the following one, social justice and advocacy. This promotes, will promote the well-being of individuals, communities, and advocate for a more just and equitable society. The second one is prayer and spiritual guidance, with the obligation to offer spiritual guidance and prophetic insight to national and county government leaders. It is through prayers we invite divine blessings upon leaders, trusting the power of God to, buy, to guide and inspire them for the greater good of all. The third one is a civic education empowerment. These initiatives will raise awareness about social issues, civic responsibilities, and opportunities for positive change. The third one, the fourth one is dialogue and collaboration. Your Grace will be open to join in discussing social issues and endeavor to promote peace and reconciliation. And on this, Your Grace, allow me to address to myself, to the Gen Z uh, generation, I have been followed all through, and I've heard you cry and concerns, and please forgive us where we have failed to you as a church. To the Gen Z, as a young bishop, I can identify with your frustrations. There's a big dichotomy between what we confess sometimes as Christians, but also what we practice. I will endeavor to challenge the status with my individual life in both what I say and do and invite you all to engage with me as we seek to find a lasting solution for our country. In conclusion, Your Grace and my dear brethren, with God's help, with God's help and the un unwavering support of our capable team of clergy, lay readers and our committed Christians, these pillars are achievable. We will align them within, with, the, with the diocesan strategic plan, guiding us on our Christian journey. My deepest aspiration is to witness a community of Christians whose lives reflect the abundant blessings promised by Christ. I envision a diocese where every individual carries Christ in their heart, possesses a wealth of knowledge, enjoys sustenance on their table, and experiences prosperity in their pockets. This vision resonates with the profound message of John 10, 10b. I came that they may have life, but also have it in abundance. Where Christ declares his purpose to grant abundant life to all who follow him. I desire to see this abundance manifested in every aspect of our diocesan community, enriching the lives of all its members and radiating their transformative power of Christ's love to the world. Allow me, your grace, to reflect on the words of Rick Warren that says, the church grows warmer, through fellowship, deeper through discipleship, and stronger through worship, broader through ministry, and larger through evangelism. Your grace, as I conclude, I would, lie, I would, I would do injustice to myself 
if I fail to recognize some of the people who have shaped my ministry life. Special thanks to my wife, Dorcas Jerry Gashadi, who has been a great pillar and support throughout our life, my life, and especially during this journey. Your love, my dear support,